I'm here today with Mark Briffer from Air Partner, who have just released their full year 2020 results. Mark, many thanks for joining us. Can you give us an overview of these results? Yep. Good morning, everybody. Um, wow, it's been a really challenging time. Uh, we've been extremely busy um, since um, COVID-19. Uh, lots of things going on in the business. However, conscious of the fact we've got a set of results we're getting out this morning uh, on the year that was just finished, uh, which is 31 January 2020. Um, so moving back to the results, um, it's been a, it was a difficult year. Um, we had a lack of one-off events. Uh, we also had customers delaying their spend, which was primarily driven by Brexit and also the UK elections, which, which naturally impacted the business. Very unusual uh, in, a, in a charter uh, business in one particular finance year. Nonetheless, having said all that, we have been able to broaden our portfolio of aviation products with the acquisition of Redline, uh, which is a security um, provider, uh, which also in, helps us enlarge our consulting train division. And we've basically renamed it now Safety and Security to better improve our offering in this particular area. Moving back to charter, we have had some organic investment in offices and also people. We've opened up three new offices in Houston, Singapore, as well as Dubai. And looping back round to Redline, it's also right for me to point out to you that during COVID-19, they've been a big help and supporter to the charter business as we've been moving forwards during the past three months. What were the highlights of the year? Well, we alluded to already, the acquisition of Redline was probably one of our biggest standout highlights of the year. Um, that in itself has helped us diversify our strategy um, in the aviation security sector, which for me basically is um, a business which I can see continuing to grow. Um, security is always, always going to be key in aviation, but also outside of aviation as well, as where Redline have some really good long term contract revenues with some really good global blue chip customers, which, are, which naturally gives us material visibility for our long term revenues. And if you come back to one of the biggest challenges we've got in charter, as we're seeing at the moment in the charter side, the lumpiness and the quality of the earnings by going down the route of safety and security and acquiring these businesses, it's helping us actually smooth out some of that lumpiness we've got in the earnings. It also is allowing us to cross sell um, uh, the, the uh, business as well at the same time. And I've got a great example later on of where we've been able to do that, particularly around about February time when we had the um, Diamond Princess, the Japanese cruise liner, which we had to bring people back from. Um, Redline also offers some really exciting tech capabilities, and it also comes with some really good talent, management talent, as well as the tech talent as well at the same time. It offers a security management system defined as SEMS, as well as an e-learning platform, which we are going to transfer into Bain Simmons as we move forwards. And we also believe that the Bain Simmons customers and the safety and security customers with Redline will share the same e-learning platforms, which we believe as we move forwards will be hugely beneficial. It also has some really good group relationships with airports, as well as airlines and governments, along with some corporate companies around the world. Again, coming back to securing the long-term revenue stream, which I think will be really useful. And the last one for me on one of the highlights is we've been able to grow safety and security now to a point where it contributes 13.5% of the total gross profits compared to financial year 19, which was only 119 so as I say before, we are moving in the right direction, albeit some would say it's fairly slow, but argue one, about, one would say in actual fact, they can see some really good visibility here in what we're trying to do. If I look back to charter, we have had a good highlight in the year. We have been able to grow the US private jet business, which continues to go from strength to strength. We've got gross profit now up 42.5% on the prior year. And notably within that jet car performance here, has been exceptionally strong as well, with memberships now up to 32% year on year. And I have to say here, throughout the COVID-19 and now as we move forwards on the recovery, we are seeing many more inquiries for the jet car product. Clearly people showing an interest in flying private over commercial and wanting to be exclusive on their own. The world's obviously changed a lot in the last few months as a result of COVID. How has Air Partner been impacted? Yeah, so so th this is th this for us has been a a, a fascinating time. Um, first and foremost is as everybody will know, the aviation industry has been severely impacted by this. 
you see many, many news stories around airlines being grounded, um, aviation companies looking to raise money um, through various different channels. However, Air Partner, there's two sides to this business at the moment of what's been impacted both positively and negatively. Let's start with the positive, which is the charter side. And firstly, I'd say to you here is our freight team have been massively busy, significantly busy in moving PPE equipment from, from China into all over the world, um, working 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the last three months. Um, and for us, um, I'd, I'd put some colour on this by saying to you, Donald Trump stood up um, and announced when America actually recognised that they had um, coronavirus, that um, aeroplanes were leaving China to come into America with the first equipment. As those aeroplanes were landing, they were our aeroplanes that we chartered as Donald Trump was speaking. That's how impactful we've been as a business throughout the world throughout this time. Re really live in real life situations in trying to save lives um, as an organisation. That's on the freight side. And we also see this carrying on right through to, to June and maybe into July. On the charter side, we've been heavily busy with moving, repatriating people back from cruise ship companies as well as cruise crews as well at the same time. Again, taking them back from all over, uh, from the US and Europe to back to all over the world. Again, been extremely busy in bringing these people home. Very complex operations. But also I'd say to you, Again, the team's been working 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the last three months. Incredibly busy. Um, on the negative side or on the less uh, positive side on charter, the private jet business has been significantly impacted throughout COVID-19. But however, having said that, we are now seeing small green shoots of inquiries coming back as well as bookings. And it's worth pointing out we are tracking against market trends as well at the same time. But I'm seeing the recovery in private jets uh, more in the USA as a, as a V-shaped sign of recovery, rather than Europe and UK seeing more of a Nike-shaped sign of recovery. So in other words, a lot slower. On the safety and security side, it's been a lot more challenging. On safety in particular, um, sadly, airlines and aviation industry see safety as discretionary spends. So in this particular area here, um, people have pretty much stopped spending and we're trying to look at the business and work out how do we redefine ourselves for when we come out of recovery. Needs more work, but we're working through that slowly. On the security side, we've run some great contracts, which are, are for the next two to three years. And last but not least to me, bringing it really home to life in what we've been really doing, we caught wind of this very early on in the stages because we were significantly involved with the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in moving UK and EU nationals back into the UK from Wuhan. And as a result of that, our team working with Redline in trying to get people home, offering the airport security, we actually had people in quarantine for two weeks as they came back to the UK, quarantine of our own people, just to make sure we were being safe and clear and making sure we were abiding by the government guidelines. But what I would say at that particular point, we saw the severity of this. So the I got the company positioned very well to act very quickly on the event of when it would take shape in the UK. And there's absolutely no doubt about it. We have significantly benefited from our early management decisions and what we should do with the company. And if you come back to what you've been doing over the recent months, we've been naturally updating the market every month on how we've been performing. And we did say recently, in our April update that we expected the PBT unaudited accounts to be at six million pounds. We are tracking favorably against budget um, for the month of May and the June pipeline is also looking very encouraging indeed. And why is Air Partner more resilient than other aviation companies? Yeah, so, so Air Partner five years ago um, actively diversified uh, within its strategy to have a much more broadening of product offerings. So we formed um, a safety and security division. Um, but let me just talk through why we're so broad today and how we benefited from COVID-19, which has made our business a lot more robust. So if I come back to charter, um, we can offer um, a commercial jet op um, operation, uh, which is 20 seats and above, and clearly that's been working quite, quite well through COVID-19. We can also offer an executive solution, so the private jet solution, which is less than 20 seats. And clearly there we refer to their inject card as well at the same time. And then we can offer a whole plane charter with freight. And as I referred to it earlier on, freight has been extremely busy through COVID-19. And then we've got our emergency planning division, which offers subscription services for, for um, 
big corporate companies that require to get their personnel out of regions, which we've seen quite a lot through COVID-19, um, and we're seeing more, more of a potential uptake on that as we go forwards. So you can see in the charter side, we've got a much stronger breadth there of, of what we've been doing. And in overlaying that, we've been actually growing our business in charter globally for opening up more offices and hiring really good talent from the competition. If I go on to the safety and security side, what we've got here is we've got safety, where we have offering safety services to the aviation industry. And then on the security side, we're clearly offering security services to the aviation industry, as well as um, government services as well at the same time. So as you can see, um, if one comes down and the one comes up, you're, you're, you've been able to diversify so much that it gives you a much more, many more different options of, of when crises like this happen, uh, which are just unprecedented. If you compare us to the competition, um, nobody is following this strategy to become an aviation services group and is diversified in this way. You'll find a lot of people in one area and not the other area. And in airlines, it's really about point to point, seats on an airplane and going to a, a destination. What actions have you taken to preserve cash? Clearly, through the evacuation we're doing through Wuhan, we got, a, we got on this really early, way back at, um, early February. So what we've been able to do is we've tightly managed the costs across the group um, by making sure we've maintained the sufficient working capital to support these big uh, programs that we've been doing, but also to ensure we emerge out of the crisis um, uh, you know, in, a, in a very strong and competitive position. Um, we've also implemented um, a series of temporary uh, cost management initiatives by minimising um, all discretion we spend, and we, again, we did this extremely early. Um, so, you know, we took a view of where do we really need to spend our money and where we don't. And we've cancelled everything that we felt wasn't really a need to do at this moment in time with a view of this is all about, as I use the word, extending the cash runway in making sure we survive coming out the other side of this stronger, but also well positioned. So that was our mantra at the very beginning. In addition to what I've said there, all of the board of directors have taken currently a voluntary 20% pay reduction. And that started at the end of March, last week in March, and it's gonna run right through to the end of June. But also, all of the UK workforce have taken exactly the same. I'd like to also point out to you, we have also um, used the available government grants um, which has helped us to benefit, reduce our cost base in the near term. And that's not just in the UK, it's in the UK, it's in Europe, and it's also in the USA at the same time. Um, and that has absolutely helped us in making sure we manage the cost base through the business levels um, through, through these difficult times. Um, and to summarise it already, once we've been able to do that, the board has taken the decision at this moment in time to not to recommend a final dividend payment. And when do you intend to pay the dividend again? Yeah, so um, as a board, we constantly talk about this on a regular basis. Um, and what we're going to do here, we want to make sure we preserve the cash and we don't run out of runway. That's our number one priority here. We will then evaluate um, the risks related to COVID-19 once they have subsided and then decide what our dividend should be and how we're going to communicate that going forwards. I don't expect to see that to come into shape until we get closer to the interims. And what's the outlook for the rest of the financial year? Big question, this one. Um, so, so, so firstly, let's just talk about just where we are. Um, and I'd say to you that we've had a very strong start to the year, as, as I've alluded to throughout this presentation. Uh, we've been extremely busy, both in the freight area um, and also the commercial jet area, um, and it has actually served the business extremely well. Um, it's also worth pointing out that the security side has won some really good contracts at the same time, really good long-term contracts. So I see um, the, the commercial jet side starting to pick up slowly. Private jets, we're already seeing some really good green shoots. Um, particularly in America, um, and I think that will come back in America probably quicker and how we see it in Europe, but we're seeing those green shoots starting to come through. On the freight side, I think the demand uh, will carry on for at least another month and is likely to curtail, um, certainly on PPE, 
but we're starting to see some green shoots on the automotive uh, work starting to come back, but nowhere near to the same levels of what we've seen so far with freight and its activity. However, I'd like to point out to you here is, is that if we get a second wave, no matter where it is in the world, I'm sure we'll be called upon again and the freight team will be geared up to take that forwards. On the safety piece, um, a longer runway is required to see the recovery. And as part of that, the, the way and our shape and our offering is being looked at very closely. Um, so there's more work there to be done. So I'd say to you, high net worths are going to be starting to fly more and probably use private jets more than what they're using commercial jets. So we're going to have a strong half year. And to go beyond our half year at the end of July, looking further forward than that, will be extremely difficult for me at this moment in time to make any predictions. But I don't predict that the second half of the year will be as strong as the first half. But I do think there are some encouraging signs and some very good opportunities which we are exploring. Mark, thanks very much indeed. Any closing remarks? Thank you. Um, there is a, there is a two points I want to raise at the very end. Um, one is I want to uh, thank our people um, for the hard work, the dedication, um, and also um, making sure clearly we continue to protect them um, throughout this crisis. Um, it's been extremely difficult. Some have found it very difficult working from home, but the work and dedication that they put in throughout this time has been nothing more than exemplary. So huge thank you to those. And I also want to thank our customers for their continued, to, for, for their continued support, for their understanding, and for also wanting to continue to use our services throughout the entire group. And I believe we're well positioned to continue to serve them well as we go into the future.